Isn't it wonderful that we've been destined by God to be the light of the world and the salt of the earth? However, there are unseen forces that are bent on stopping us from becoming all we were made to be. Matthew 5, 13 and 14, KJV said, Ye are the salt of the earth. It is ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. A great door is open to us as children of the king, but spiritual forces and agents of the devil will not sit back and allow us to have a free pass. Our God-given destiny. A great door and effectual is opened unto me, and there are many adversaries. 1 Corinthians 16, 9, KJV. The truth is, there is more to life than the physical realm we see. The spiritual realm is as real as the physical realm. So many things happen around us, and most times we don't have any explanation for them. This is because we forget so easily that our struggle is not against flesh and blood, contending only with physical opponents, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly, supernatural places. Ephesians 6, 12, AMP. They are referred to as spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly supernatural realm, and their stock in trade is to wage spiritual warfare against the growth and breakthroughs of kingdom citizens. We can't see them, but we cannot deny the effect of their existence and manipulations. They work to stop us from advancing or making any meaningful progress in all that we do. Why? Let's look at the story of Daniel. After praying, he waited for God's answer. But the prince of Persia, a demonic principality, withstood the angel that conveyed the answers to his prayers. Then said he unto me, Fear not, Daniel, for them the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God. Thy words were heard, and I come for thy words. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and twenty days. But lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, and I remained there with the kings of Persia. Daniel 10, 12 and 13, KJV. People sometimes are so quick to get angry at God thinking that he is unfeeling and detached. Some even think he is wicked just because they do not see answers for certain prayers. Not knowing that God has answered, but there were demonic manipulations, or probably like the case of Daniel, the prince of Persia has interfered with the delivery of the answers to us. Indeed, a great future is God's will for us as stated in John 1-2. Beloved, I pray that in every way you may succeed and prosper and be in good health, physically, just as I know your soul prospers spiritually. There are even territories or career fields he has given us, but he says fight to take possession. It is yours, but don't wait for victory to drop in your laps. War against the forces that won't want you to take it. Deuteronomy 2.24 Rise ye up, take your journey, and pass over the river Arnon. Behold, I have given into thine hand Sihon the Amorite, king of Heshbon, and his land. Begin to possess it and contend with him in battle. I have given you, yes, but contend to possess. If deep down you are wondering, why do I have to contend if it is already mine? Here is why. Number 1. The devil is always seeking to bring you down. 1 Peter 5, 8, KJV clearly admonish us to be sober. Be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Number 2. The devil doesn't play fair. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence and the violent take it by force. Matthew 11, 12, KJV. 
The devil is not a fair, gentle man that hurts because you deserve hurt. No, he doesn't play games by following the rules. That's why we must be ready to always be offensive and defensive where he and his demons are concerned. If Jesus says that it takes violence to take our inheritance in the kingdom, then we must be ready to fight. Number 3. You have been appointed to stop him in his tracks. See, I have appointed you this day over the nations and over the kingdoms, to uproot and break down, to destroy and overthrow, to build and to plant. Jeremiah 1.10 AMP Your king has entrusted you with the responsibility to stop the activities of these agents of darkness that are out to stop you. Number 4. The wicked shows no mercy. The Bible calls Satan the wicked one. This implies that he has not even a drop of empathy or compassion. We can't cry or plead our way out of his plans and schemes. So before they stop us, we must stop them. Job 5.12 says that he disappointeth the devices of the crafty, so that their hands cannot perform their enterprise. Number 5. To stop every of his conspiracy against us. The devil can stir up different conspiracies against us, using people around us, at work, in our families, in our businesses, anywhere and any means possible. He works through spiritual and even physical agents like witches, mediums, and the evil loving individuals to plot our downfall. See what the word says. Take counsel together against Judah, but it will come to nothing. Speak the word for it will not stand, for God is with us, Emmanuel. For in this way the Lord spoke to me with his strong hand upon me, and instructed me not to walk in the way of this people, behaving as they do, saying, You are not to say, it is a conspiracy, in regard to all that this people call a conspiracy. And you are not to fear what they fear not in the dread of it. It is the Lord of hosts, whom you are to regard as holy and awesome. He shall be your source of fear. He shall be your source of dread, not man. Then he shall be a sanctuary, a sacred, indestructible shelter for those who fear and trust him. But to both the houses of Israel, both the northern and southern kingdoms, Israel and Judah, he will be a stone on which to stumble and a rock on which to trip a trap and a snare for the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Many among them will stumble over them. Then they will fall and be broken. They will even be snared and trapped. Isaiah 8, 10 through 15 AMP. Some Christians will say, aren't we supposed to be easygoing and peace loving? Aren't we supposed to forgive those who hurt us? Yes, the Bible says that we should forgive those that trespasses against us. However, this is when they are humans. The Bible didn't say forgive evil spirits or demonic spirits. These spirits are ruthless, wicked, and unforgiving, and have a clear and precise mandate to kill, steal, and destroy. Jesus was both a lamb, full of kindness for hurting and ignorant people, but he was also a lion, tearing apart demonic activities. So much so, that even demon-possessed people would shout from a distance, have you come to destroy us? That's how we should torment demons. We must live like Jesus and unseat these devils that love to unleash pain, tears, and blood. He cast them out, he rebuked them, and then he gave us all authority in heaven and earth to do the same. By saying in my name, cast them out, give them no place. Now let's go to war and displace these defeated demons that have refused to stay in the chain reserved for them in hell. Father in heaven, thank you for exposing the devil and the activities of his agents around my life. I celebrate you for being mindful of me. Thank you for the authority and power that you have bestowed upon me to exercise dominion over devils and everything in the realm of darkness. Thank you for your powerful name, Jesus, that you have given to me. Thank you because, Lord, by this matchless name, every knee must bow, whether on earth 
in the heavens, or beneath the earth. Thank you for placing me far above principalities, powers, and all rulers of darkness. Thank you for raising me from sin to sit together with Jesus in this high place. Your word says in Isaiah 59, 25, and 26, that even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away, and the prey of the terrible shall be delivered. For I will contend with him that contendeth with thee, and I will save thy children. And I will feed them that oppress thee with their own flesh, and they shall be drunken with their own blood, as with sweet wine. And all flesh shall know that I the Lord am the Savior and thy Redeemer, the Mighty One of Jacob. I therefore come against every evil force that has been assigned to frustrate God's goodness over my life. I come against you by the precious blood of the Lamb and decree an end to your devilish activities in my life. I agree in the name of Jesus Christ that every trick and manipulation of the devil is canceled now. He and his agents that have previously stopped my advancement are destroyed right now. Enough of their wickedness around me, because surely there is an end, and my expectations shall not be cut short in the name of Jesus Christ. I have been ordained as a king and priest to reign on the earth, but the devil and his agents are not having it. Therefore I resist them by your blood, because your word says that, they overcame and conquered him because of the blood of the Lamb and because of the word of their testimony. For they did not love their life and renounce their faith even when faced with death. Revelation 12, 11, AMP Where the word of the king is, there is power. Therefore, by the authority I have as one redeemed to be a king, I forbid Satan and his demons from running things around my vicinity from henceforth. I decree that every gates of hell blocking the advancement of my destiny lift up your head right now in the name of Jesus Christ. No gate is permitted to be shut against me, and every door to my next level is opened unto me right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, ancient doors that the King of glory may come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O gates, and lift them up ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is then this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory, who rules over all creation with his heavenly armies. Psalms 24, 7-10 AMP. I come with the authority of the Most High God, and I soar into new levels of glory, honor, promotions, dignity, and sweat less triumph in the name of Jesus Christ. From now on, it is victory for me. I am an overcomer by the blood of Jesus, because God is for me and with me. All I do is win. Songs of triumph fill my mouth and habitation daily. I cannot be stopped in the name of Jesus Christ. I step into my realms of multiple promotions and advancement in every areas of my life. As I advance, the world will begin to glorify the Lord God of hosts in me, to the glory and praise of his name. Thank you, Lord, for this victory. For in Jesus' mighty name I pray, amen. Continue to decree the word particularly if you notice any operation of the devil around you. Do not give in to their antics and you will continue to win in Jesus' name.